In this screencast I'll show you how to deconvolute an absorption band using solver. The particular example that we're going to look at is the amide 1 band for a protein which is between 1600 and 1700 centimeters to the minus 1. And the, the crosses that we can see here are the experimental data points and these can be deconvoluted into a series of Gaussian distributions which we can see represented here as green, blue, red, purple and orange. And when we sum up each of those Gaussian distributions, we get the overall model which is represented by the black line. And you can see that that black line goes nicely through the experimental data points. In order to achieve this fit to the data, we need to go through a series of steps. First of all, we'll start with the experimental data, which is just represented by these crosses and a little bit easier to see on this graph. And these data points are simply measured using the experimental method. Next, we say we want to model this as a series of Gaussian distributions. So we have to have formulas and equations that create these numbers and allow us to have this series of different distributions. Final step is to add each of those up to give an overall model and we can see that there's no fit at all between these at the moment but this is our initial conditions using a set of dummy values just to generate these curves. In order to get this model to fit to the experimental data, we need to use Solver. So look at, let's look at the spreadsheet and see how we can do that. This spreadsheet has all the data that's been represented on those graphs. And for example, the first set of data is here from 1600 to 1700 centimeters to the minus one. Are all, these are all the absorption values for the experimental data. Next, we have the model. So again, the same wave numbers from 1600 down to 1700 but this time we've not got experimental data points these numbers are based on a model and it's the sum of several different elements that are represented over here each of these elements is based on an equation for the Gaussian distribution and is reliant on parameters such as the relative area which tells us the size of the curve the standard deviation which determines the width of the curve and the peak value which determines where the peak position of that Gaussian distribution is going to be. And of course finally the wave number. And we can go down and see that each cell is always based on the same relative area, standard deviation and peak value, it's just the wave number that changes. And it's these columns here that are being used to give us the graph of these different Gaussian distributions that we can see on this chart. So the overall model is based on a sum of those different values. The next step is to look at the errors. So what's the difference between the model and the data? And the way we do that is we take the absorption value for the model, take away the absorption value for the data and square. We do that all the way down to 1700 centimeters to minus one, and then we sum all of those errors up all the way down. Now we've set up the problem we can use Solver to try and get a fit to the data. The way we do that is that we say we want Solver to minimize the sum of those errors by changing all of these different parameters the areas of the curves, the widths of the curves and the positions of the curves. We've also added some constraints to this model to say that we want these peak positions to be between 1600 and 1700 centimeters to minus one. And as I can show you that if we change this one, we can see we've got this first peak position highlighted and we're saying that it, we want it to be less than or equal to 1700. The final one that we need to add in to this model is that element five peak position needs to be greater than or equal to 1600. And that's how we can add that. So there it is, it's been added at the bottom there. All that remains is to press solve. Solver has now found a fit to the data for us. It's manipulated and changed all of these parameters in order to give us a fit to the data. So if we click back onto our chart, we can see that these Gaussian curves have been changed in their size and shape and position. 
and that the overall model, the black line, now goes through all of the data points. And that is how you can use Solver to deconvolute an absorption band.